Welcome to this short lecture on growth accounting. Uh, this is the sequel to a video on the importance of productivity. So if you haven't watched that, go back, uh, pause this one and go back and watch the previous one. So our starting point here is that we have this nice gross, growth accounting equation. It's listed as equation number one here. We're not gonna derive this like we did in section from fundamentals. If you need a review on that, you can go check the helpful hint. What we want to do here is kind of understand this equation intuitively, understand what the variables represent. For instance, this alpha in particular often confuses people. And then after understanding it intuitively, um, we said the real thing we wanted to understand last video is productivity. Productivity is really the key to, our to growth and our standard of living over time. So what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of math and transform this equation, number one, into a new equation that we'll call equation number two that tells us about growth and productivity specifically instead of growth in real GDP. All right, so analyzing this equation, it basically says growth in real GDP depends on three factors. The first is the percent change in A, and remember we called A total factor productivity in class, but you should think of it as basically a measure of technological progress or technical knowledge. Um, the, the more technologically sophisticated an economy, the higher its total factor productivity, and naturally the higher the technological sophistication slash TFP, uh, the, the more output the economy is going to be able to produce. So total factor productivity. I can't spell, but I think that's right. So that's one way to increase GDP is basically technological progress. And economists honestly don't understand drivers of technological progress that well. We know science is related, we know R&D is important, but um, it's not something that we're gonna be able to discuss much more, except to say that clearly, historically, it's been important. Our second factor is growth in the capital stock. Remember, capital stock is things like factories, equipment for manufacturing things, equipment for developing software, so this could be like computers and office space and whatnot. Clearly, the more capital you have, uh, the more you're going to be able to produce in the economy. So if you have increases in capital, say 5% growth in the capital stock, that's going to contribute towards more GDP. But it's going to get first multiplied by this alpha here, and this alpha is basically a measure of how important capital is. In particular, we call it the capital, capital's share. Um, and that name is a little strange, but the, the basic idea is that if you go and look at all the capital owners in the economy, the factory owners, the, 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 the business owners, the people who are getting money from owning all this equipment, the more as a fraction of total GDP goes to them in income, that's telling us that capital is you know, more important. So if 50% of the income goes to capital owners, that tells us capital is really important in this economy. So the alpha would be 0.5 for 50%, and that would be a relatively um, big multiplier on the importance of percent delta K. If an economy didn't give much to capital owners because capital owners uh, weren't that important, because capital wasn't important in the production process, then the alpha would be smaller and growth in capital would be less important to increasing GDP. Um, so we'll just make a note here, capital growth. And then finally, the last way we can increase um, GDP is just having more people in the workforce. If there's more laborers or people just work more hours, um, then you'll get more output. Although clearly that comes at a cost. Um, you know, if you're working 16 hours a day instead of eight, if everybody does that, you'll have more labor supplied, you'll have more GDP, but you know, I don't know if that's really gonna make people happier. So we have these three factors now that we interpreted. We have A, K, and L as our three uh, key contributors to GDP growth. We understand alpha. It's a measure of how important capital is. In particular, it's the fraction of total income that goes to capital owners. And now what we're going to do is say, if we take equation one and we subtract, subtract, percent delta L from both sides, and then use this nice identity here that mathematicians develop that you don't have to understand. So we use that to simplify. When we 
do this subtraction, we do this simplification, we end up with a nice equation. And really all you need to know is this equation. You don't need to be able to derive it uh, as far as I know. We, we get an equation for productivity growth. So now our left-hand side is percent change in y over l. That's percent change in productivity is equal to percent change in a plus alpha times percent change in capital per worker. It's not exactly per worker, it's really per worker hour, but uh, you can think of it as per worker. So now we can use this second equation, really our goal was to get to this equation and to understand it, to think about productivity growth. And we can see it basically comes down to two factors. There's total factor productivity growth. There, that's what we talked about earlier. It's improvements in technology. As technology gets better, each worker can produce more and we get more productive workers. The uh, other factor is what we call capital deepening. If you can get more capital per worker, so a bigger K over L, then you'll have more productivity. And um, that is scaled again by alpha like above. So the more important capital is, the more important this second term becomes. If, if the capital share is 0.5, then increases in K over L become much more important. If alpha is like 0 0.05, you know, then growth in capital per worker is not going to help you with your productivity as much. So it depends somewhat on the alpha, on the nature of capital and how important it is to your economy. Um, for the U.S., by the way, you should know that alpha has historically been around 0.3. And I think that actually doesn't vary that much across most developed economies anyway, uh, and, e and even some emerging economies like China. So in summary, we have two key equations that you should know. We have one for understanding GDP growth. It depends on three factors, technological progress, growth in the capital stock, growth in number of workers. We did some math and ended up with then an equation derived from that which says that productivity growth depends on two factors, technological progress and capital deepening, that is increase in the amount of capital per worker we have. Um, the next thing we're gonna talk about sort of in our next section is how do we get more capital per worker? And the key is investment. The more investment you do, the more factories you can build, the more equipment you can develop. Uh, even potentially, maybe that could contribute to some total factor pr productivity growth too. So we'll want to understand investment because investment can lead to more capital and we'll build a model for thinking about equilibrium investment in the long run, which is called the loanable funds model.